Hello everybody, I'm Ciprian Borodescu, CEO of Tapticals, and today's session is the first episode in a series of webinars on mobile growth. We only have around 30 minutes and a lot of ground to cover, so let's just jump in. We're going to start by browsing through some of the essential uh, user behaviors on mobile versus desktop, followed by identifying your current mobile traffic using Google Analytics. We'll then try to understand how mobile users are getting to your website, who are they, what are their interests, and how much time do they spend on your website. In closing, I'll explain why the retention rate is such a critical metric for your mobile traffic and give you recommendations on improving it. Let's start with mobile versus desktop user behaviors. First, consider the different nature of objectives when browsing. As it turns out, mobile users are generally on the hunt for specific information, while time-consuming activities are usually reserved for the comfort of PCs and laptops. Basically, this means that the needs of a mobile visitor on your website tends to be more utilitarian. Think of them as distracted with less time to spend browsing and often with a specific goal in mind. On the other hand, desktop users are more open to design elements, such as boxed testimonials of quotes, which may not support their main informational needs directly. And according to appsy.com, 37% of mobile users said that while they used their mobile device to do research, they still went to the desktop to make the purchase. This is not necessarily bad news, because according to MasterCard, customers who shop both online and offline with a specific retailer buy 250% more on average. So omni-channel shoppers might be more valuable in the long run. We also have to realize that mobile users are younger and more receptive. With over 85% of Generation Y owning smartphones, users, users aged 18 to 24 are significantly more likely to spend more time on their smartphones compared to users over the age of 25. They also tend to be more receptive to branded content than their desktop counterparts, according to a study conducted by Twitter. The generation gap seems to also be thinning with 55 to 64 year, year olds uh, also joining the smartphone revolution. How about gender differences? While age does play a role in the divide between mobile and desktop users, this technology doesn't have a gender divide, at least when it comes to smartphones, uh, the smartphone ownership. Gender differences do, however, emerge in shopping habits. Of the 46% that reported making a purchase through a mobile device, males, 54%, were significantly more likely to make an online purchase through a mobile device compared to their female counterparts, while women were significantly more likely than men to make an online purchase through a computer. 69% of females did this versus 58% of males. Another interesting behavior, mobile user activity usually peaks during mornings and evenings. Research conducted by the Financial Times shows that mobile user activity usually peaks during mornings, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., and evenings, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m., while desktop users perform their online activities mostly during working hours, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., taking into account these timing differences. The point is that both mobile and desktop users might be on your website. What they're doing there is a different story, and we're going to uncover it in just a few moments. Finally, user preferences for apps versus websites is still debatable, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. We know that the mobile browser has become a single application swimming in a sea of apps with data from Nielsen showing the user preference for mobile apps accounting for nearly 90% of time on mobile. If, however, we take into consideration the fact that users spend more than 80% of their time on just five or so heavily used apps, 
the situation changes completely. Why? Well, because what most of these apps do is to direct to the web, and research conducted by Morgan Stanley and Comscore has decisively shown that US mobile browser audiences are two times larger than app audiences across the top 50 mobile web properties. And only 12 of these top 50 mobile properties have more traffic coming from apps than from the browser. So there you go, five main differences between mobile and desktop users. All right, we went through these mobile user behaviors. Now it's time to get down to specifics. First, identifying your mobile traffic. I'm just going to guess that you're using Google Analytics to track your website's traffic. In which case, what you'll have to do is to simply authenticate into your account and navigate to Audience, Mobile, Overview. Also, make sure you select a time period of at least six months. Here's where you'll find your traffic based on device category, desktop, mobile, and tablet. The distribution varies, but typically it will look something like this. For this particular website, 43% of the traffic comes from mobile and tablet devices. In other cases, you'll see higher numbers, even well over 50%. However, What's interesting to acknowledge here is not the number itself, but the evolution. Are mobile users accessing your website more often? To answer this question, you, this question, you'll need to generate a new report by selecting from the top menu, mobile traffic and tablet traffic segments. What this chart tells you is that the mobile and tablet traffic are correlated week by week, month by month. But here comes the tricky part. Comparing the overall mobile traffic evolution, that means smartphones and tablets, with the desktop traffic. You might notice that the former becomes flat over time, or even decreasing even though the desktop traffic is increasing. In this particular example, however, the situation is even more critical, as you'll see in the moment. Both desktop and mobile traffic is decreasing even though the evolution was heading into the right direction in the past. This is a vital piece of information, because it basically contradicts the global mobile trend. Mobile usage has already surpassed desktop usage in 2014 and Gartner expects mobile traffic to rise to 59% in 2016. Obviously, not being able to discover and recognize this trend into your own website traffic is a strong signal that you're missing out on a huge opportunity. Let's dig a little bit more into the data and see how mobile users actually get on your website. Using the left panel, navigate to Acquisition, All Traffic, Channels. And notice that the report that has been generated contains data on referral, organic search, direct, social, and email. You might find yourself in a situation where you don't have a single source of mobile traffic, but rather a mix of channels. No matter the combination, the idea would be to see how you can replicate these results within the best performing channel and how to improve and grow the other sources. For example, in this report, email marketing doesn't drive a lot of mobile traffic, in which case it might be a good idea to refresh the email marketing strategy and see if there's anything that can be improved in the messaging targeted towards on-the-go users. Now, based on your own numbers, multiple scenarios may apply. The majority of mobile users land on your website through organic search. 
This is actually a validation of the fact that your website is mobile SEO friendly. This is important because Google announced that starting April 21st, 2015, it will penalize non-mobile optimized websites. You want to make sure you're not in the red zone when it comes to Google's mobile ranking system. Mobile users are referred to your website. You need to go deeper and identify your referrals. You might realize that the top sources that are driving traffic to your website are extremely valuable and you can replicate this acquisition model to others in the same industry or market. Your mobile website is being accessed directly by your users. Now this is exciting. The bigger this number is, the better. Why? Because it tells you that you have retention, loyal mobile users. These are your super users and you should treasure them. Ask yourself, how can I keep the momentum going and get my fans to refer their friends? Social drives the majority of uh, traffic to your mobile website. Usually this happens when you already have an active social community and whenever you post something they're engaged with. Dig a little bit deeper to find out where they come from. Is it Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or others? And what is the type of content they respond to? And finally, the last scenario, email marketing is the number one mobile traffic generator for your website. According to Gardner, 74% of smartphones owners use their device to check their email. Also, by the end of 2018, worldwide mobile email users will exceed 2.2 billion. By this time, 80% of email users are expected to access their email accounts via a mobile device. In other words, it makes sense to design your email campaigns with that in mind. Who are your mobile users and what are their interests? You can enable the, the demographics and interests reports from either the admin or reporting tabs. Once that's done, you'll be able to see your user's age and gender distribution together with their interests. Finding the correlation between age and interest is important for your mobile strategy. The sooner you identify it, the better for your business. One interesting thing we discovered for some of our customers was that session duration increases with age. This is a good indication that while the content might be of value to few, the majority is not really engaged. And as an online publisher, you want to get to the bottom of it and understand how your target audience really behaves. This is where interests may come in handy. And that's where another piece of information can help. Content versus session duration. You can navigate to Behavior Overview to get the average duration for your mobile pages. But it's more relevant to drill down and see the content your mobile users are consuming and what it amounts. For this, you need to go to Behavior, Site Content, All Pages. The goal here is to analyze the average time on page, correlated with the topic titles you have on your mobile website and the hour of the day when the session takes place. This report is a bit complicated to generate, so here's what you need to do step by step. Choose the topic page you want to drill down and select Performance View. Select Hour as the secondary dim dimension of the report. Make sure you have Show Rows set to at least 25. And at this point, your table header should contain four columns, page, hour, page views, and page views. Change the last two columns to average time on page and time on page. Last step is to order everything by hour. It really doesn't matter if it's ascending or descending. What you want to see is something like this. Let's see what this tells us. 
Apparently, mobile users access the website mostly in the first part of the day and in the evenings. Notice the pics. Why is this happening? Is this correlated with the publishing schedule of your website? Or is it simply how mobile users behave altogether? Confirming the financial time research I mentioned in the intro. Last metric we need to identify and the most important one, in my opinion, is the retention rate. A high retention rate is your first source for growing your mobile traffic, as you'll see in just a few moments. Here's what you need to do uh, to get to the retention rate in Google Analytics. Navigate to Audience Overview and make sure you segment it by mobile and tablet traffic. You'll immediately notice the new visitor versus returning visitors blue-green pie chart. In this example, it's clear that the retention rate for the time period we chose is 20%. In other words, out of all of our mobile users that we had in the last 6 months, only 2 out of 10 have returned to the website at least once. Is that good or bad? Well, to put things into perspective, let's look at how the desktop website performs by, by adding the desktop traffic in the filtering options. As you can see, users that are interacting with the desktop website are more likely to come back, with a 45% retention rate for desktop users. The percentage we got for mobile visitors suddenly doesn't look that good, right? If this is similar with what you find, found out on your own Google Analytics dashboard, I would suggest having a deeper look at other aspects such as average session duration, sessions and page views. Chances are that your mobile, versions, uh, your mobile version underperforms the desktop website in all aspects. So the question really becomes, how do you improve your retention rate? What steps you need to follow to keep as many users as possible from those that already land on your mobile website? This is where you need to concentrate your efforts first and foremost before actually acquiring new users. Otherwise, all your acquisition efforts will be mute. Here are some of our recommendations that you can apply immediately to improve your retention rate. Speed up your mobile website by leveraging browser caching, enabling compression, optimizing images, minifying JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, eliminating render blocking JavaScript and CSS, in above the fold content. Now, these recommendations are pretty technical and we'll go in more details in our next webinar. But we also wrote about it in our blog so you can follow it step by step and have a head start. You could also play around with various elements of your mobile website design, publishing schedule or topics, and see how it influences the retention rate. Say you feel like a certain type of content should be pushed above the fold for your mobile users. Do that for a week and measure the impact for that cohort. Has the retention rate gone up? If the answer is yes, then you can make it a regular thing. Same thought process applies when adding new features to your mobile website. Did it positively influence the retention rate? You can also invert the question. What are the features that would, that would increase the retention rate on my mobile website? Testing it by cohorts will actually identify those features that have the biggest impact. And speaking of cohorts, let me show you how you can actually track that in Google Analytics. Navigate to Audience Cohort Analysis. Set the cohort size to by week and date range to six weeks. And of course, don't forget to filter it by mobile and tablet traffic. As you can see, users that accessed this mobile website in the first week of June, little over 1,000 users, have already churned by week six. In other words, only 2% of them returned to this mobile website on the second week when experimenting with various aspects of your mobile website. What you want to see is an increase in the retention rate for a particular cohort. For example, for users that access the mobile website 
on the last week of June, the retention rate has gone up to 3.6% in the second week, which is still small, but it's an improvement. In other words, whatever happened on that week must be analyzed, improved and replicated towards an even better retention rate. I would suggest trying out the recommendations on speeding up your mobile website and see if that has an impact on the retention rate, week by week, month by month. This is a time-consuming process. But that's how you stop the leak. There's no universal patch for it, only discipline. The discipline of improving your retention rate by experimenting with your mobile website and analyzing your cohorts. Don't just trust the default responsive website your developer put in place for you. One size fits all worked a couple of years ago. The mobile user today is more versatile and you need to discover the sweet spot if you want to grow your business. This was the first episode in a series of webinars on mobile growth. More will follow, so stay tuned. In the next one, we'll go deeper into the recommendations I, uh, I've already presented on speeding up your mobile website. I see that some of you already sent a couple of questions on the chat, so I'm just going to select one. Uh, here's an interesting one. I understand the importance of the retention rate, but how do you actually get more traffic to your mobile uh, website? Well, this Actually, first of all, this topic is going to be addressed in more details um, on another webinar. But what I can briefly tell you right now is that after fixing the retention rate, your next, next focus should be indeed acquiring new users. And there are a few ways to do that. First, I'd have a look to see what is the current acquisition rate and what are the best performing channels. Remember that I showed you where to find that in Google Analytics in this uh, webinar. But generally speaking, however, there are a few things you can experiment with, um, including Facebook Instant Articles and Google Accelerated Mobile Pages, and see if those are viable acquisition channels for you. We actually wrote really interesting and comprehensive posts on our blog quoting various mobile experts on pros and cons when using Facebook Instant Articles or accelerated mobile pages. And I would recommend uh, having a look for further details. All right. Um, well, I imagine you all have a lot of questions after this webinar. So if you need further help understanding the root of your retention rate issue, drop me a line and I'd be happy to assist. Thank you all for attending. Keep those mobile users happy and see you next time.